You can hard fade that right out. Let's get into this. It's Tuesday, September 11th. Welcome. Um, Simply put, what I saw last night was in my time in in, in our city here, I've, I've worked in this city since uh, the beginning of 04. I've lived in the state since 98. That was, bar none, the single worst opening game by any team I've ever seen. Ever. In my 37 years on this planet. That was an out-and-out embarrassment. That was disgraceful. And mind you, we're not talking about a a rebuilding team or the Buffalo Bills. You have a 10-year veteran quarterback. You have high-priced players. The NFL gifted you a win, opening up with the Jets, a rookie QB barely old enough to buy a six-pack, at home, at night, And you showed, if you've ever wanted to know what 53 anuses look like, well, every player on this team showed them. I mean, that that was, it was absolutely stunning. There's nothing in the history of this football team that prepares you for that. Not me. And that performance was so cringeworthy, was so... I don't even know if people, the the, the fans, have the capacity to be embarrassed anymore because this organization essentially is a butthole. But it's just unfathomable to me. But let let me take you backwards before we go forwards. Now, look, I gave him benefit of the doubt. Despite speaking to you and trying to clue you in on what's going on, I thought they'd win last night. I admit that. But I'm the guy who, for years, if you're a longtime listener to the show, I never value preseason, right? What did I do this year? I valued preseason. I panicked. I told you guys they look really, 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 really bad. I'm really, really, really worried. We brought up the Burkett piece where I told you, guys, players are telling them this, Okay. Training camp is brutal. I've done the shows where I said, hey, you know, the Patriots beat the living hell out of their players. And that's kind of what's going on here. And this team doesn't look to have energy, right? You know, in the last, I don't know, two weeks, how you've heard me say a very dirty word on the air, wizen hunt. How Patricia, if he doesn't get off to a good start, this whole thing could collapse. That he could be wizen hunt, like a guy who gets fired after a year or year and a half. Guys, there are reasons. And what you saw last night, hey, I I don't have all the answers, all right? I I know I'm in a position where it's like, well, wait, if you're so smart, why don't you coach the team? Okay, thank you for that. But here's my point to you. There are things I know. I know football. I know sports. And you listen to the right people. You get the right stuff. I'm telling you this right now. That team went out last night and showed their ass on national television. And what they also showed is they hate this guy. Okay? I'm telling you, you don't come out in week one and quit if you value your coach. You don't come out in week one, and not only do you lose, that's not a loss, you got absolutely emasculated on national television. You don't do that if you've bought into the program. You came out against a team that will struggle to win six games, and you allowed them to burn your own building down. Ford Field, empty, eight minutes to go, except for Jet fans chanting J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. In a history of embarrassing moments for the Lions, that ranks in the top five. That scene last night is a top five moment it was outer worldly i am telling you right now it is my belief matt patricia is going to be a disaster here okay a disaster and i will either be right and no one will remember and that's fine i don't do this job for daps 
or I will be wrong. And it will be a, a one of my worst takes of my career where it's like, oh, remember when you didn't like him? I'm telling you right now, Matt Patricia last night looked like a guy in over his head, losing his players, and has no idea what he's doing. And this is the problem with Patriot assistance. We've talked about this. I've tried to bring this up. Patriot assistants think it's New England. I have rings. I know Bill Belichick. Here's how we do business. And they beat the hell out of their players. They beat them down verbally. They beat them down physically. And they go, hey, this is how we do it. This is how it's done. This is what Uncle Bill does. And you know what happens? They all fail. Because it isn't New England. Because you don't have Tom Brady. Because Bill Belichick is the one who knocks, not you. And when you can't win at a historical clip, no group of players will put up with it. This is not the 1960s. You're not Lombardi. These are grown men. That team last night took the field with no juice, no legs, no fight. It's week one, and the first play of the game was a pick six. Think about that. A pick six. The first throw of the effing season by the 21-year-old rookie was a pick six. Seven nothing. Electric or not. This is a group of players that by their actions is showing they do not want to be here. They do not want to buy into this. And this is a coach, I tell you, I have said it for weeks now. If they don't get off to a good start, this thing's going off the cliff. You don't lose 48-17 in the opener unless there are big-time problems. And let me go a step further. We've all talked about this. Just like when Quinn inherited Caldwell, problem. Patricia inherits Jim Bob Cooter. Listen to me. And I want you to be very, very, just listen. I'm trying to do this without yelling. The Jets know your place. I'm sitting on the couch and jotting down notes. And I charted at least three examples where I heard verbally the Jets call out the play and or point to the area on the field the play was going. Now, whether your 10-year quarterback doesn't have the autonomy or confidence to audible out, I'll tell you this right now. If we collectively heard that on our couch, Stafford, that O-line, they heard it on the field. Jim Bob Cooter has no concept of how to put a running game together. Now, last year, we blamed Ron Prince. The running game is broken schematically. I've earned the right to say it today because I said it to you last year. It's the same stuff. The passing game, the offensive line, how long do you have to block before the ball is released? You know what the problem is? Go watch the All-22. On every play, Jim Bob Cooter has got two receivers 40 yards down the field. These route combinations are lunacy. And this is the guy you kept here? See, here's how I think this is going to work. And again, if, if you're never wrong, you never said anything in the first place, which means you shouldn't do this job. Here's what I believe is going to happen. They're going to lose to Frisco, and then Bill Belichick's going to come here and do what he does to all his former assistants. He's going to pull their pants down, and he's going to paint a picture on their ass. You're going to be 0-3. And I'll tell you right now, I think Jim Bob Cooter will get fired. This is a debacle. Shame on Bob Quinn for this roster. Shame on Matt Patricia for the approach he's taken so far, coming to town, trying to be Billy Badass. And then last night, I'll tell you this. If he didn't understand how bad of a training camp he ran, if he didn't understand what a negative effect it was having on his players, if he didn't think that maybe that room was teetering a little bit, let me tell you something. When your players come out after the game like Ricky Jean Francois did and basically admit to quitting, then Matt, you can not only scratch your beard, scratch your ass. Take the pencil out of your ear and wake up. Because this thing is at critical mass one weekend. I'll say it. And if I'm wrong, who cares? Not me, but I don't think I'm wrong. I think you're looking at a rich co-tight 
Ray Handley, Ken Wisenhunt kind of deal here. I think this is very dangerous times for Patricia. And by the way, you know, we criticize Jim Bob Cooter, and rightfully so. I mean, that offense looked exactly the same as last year. The Jets knew your plays. Your running game is schematically flawed. Your passing game is flawed. How about Matt Patricia hiring a 90-year-old defensive coordinator who was like a D-line coach at Boston College? Paul Pasqualoni hasn't been relevant in decades. Like, the staff you put together does not instill confidence here. And while there'll be bumps in the road for a 4-3 team trying to run a 3-4, you know what isn't a bump in the road? Effort. I never, ever, ever, ever question effort. I think it's dangerous. I think it's tough when you're a bleep hole behind the microphone to question effort of guys that are putting their body on the line. But when you watch what you watched last night and you read what you read from Ricky Jean Francois and you look at the look on Patricia's face, it is a rare instance where I think it's totally acceptable to say, you know what, this team did not have the fight the minute they took the field. And when the Jets took the fight to them, there was no response. If you think it's a hot take, if you think I'm not justified in saying it, if you think you'll you'll be able to prove me wrong, that's fine. I'm telling you how I feel based on things I think I know and things that I know I see. I'm telling you right now, I think this guy's going to be a disaster. 2485399797. Trying to preserve my voice today. I'm sure at some point I won't. We'll get to your phone calls next. If you're going to be selling your home, we got a couple questions. 